All right, something I want to talk about with this 3i Atmos, um, it, again, not a lot of people were talking about. Uh, I, I'm actually kind of surprised they haven't made the correlation of what's going to happen. But um, I think so many people are focused on uh, the object itself that we're not, because it's still, it's still kind of out here. It isn't uh, right now, it's somewhere out here. Uh, we can just do the slider. Let's kind of see where we're at right now. It's, yeah, we'll just basically say the fourth. So it's still basically just passed through the asteroid belt. Um, now it's on its way to make a close interaction to Mars. It'll be within the, you know, the actual atmosphere of Mars, which is pretty crazy um, when we talk about uh, solar science. But as it passes through the ecliptic right here, it also... Um, again, kind of strange that not a lot of people are talking about this, but I think they will as it approaches closer. So this is the northern torrid stream. So this is what makes the meteors um, every year. And so here's Mars's orbit. Okay. Here that red line is Mars's orbit. And as we can see, if we pass through, so this, this um, white line is a representation of the torrid's ecliptic, okay? Not ecliptic, but orbit. So I had orbits around the sun like that, right? So um, just, I'll play it here. We'll come out um, just out to September. And then I'll just give a little play here, maybe like 0.2. So you see, they come in, they, they you know, the sun's gravity, whoosh! You know, they kind of went slow and whoosh, right? But they're actually traveling on this uh, white line right here, okay? So that's what we want to pay attention to when we look, right? So when, and see, it, it makes a nice wide band. So this is the primary thing that this is trying to show is the band is the band of it and but the white the other white line is the actual um orbit of it all right and so see they're just out here and then our gravity sort of just sucks them in the sun's the sun does um see and they show little comments like that that kind of come through it but since 3i atlas is such a strange comet it's going to be very interesting to see how it interacts in November with this area as it uh, literally pierces our ecliptic. Because again, we're going to be here in November, right? Kind of so like November the 16th, and then it kind of has it on like four or five day things. But um, so there's Mars's eclipse or orbit, better said, and then here's that comet. Literally will be interacting with this entire cluster of the northern torrids, the northern torrid stream. And we also have the southern torrid stream, which, you know, is is a part of this, this whole same object, but um, it's just more active, I guess, is probably the right term. If I if I am um, reading that all right, but again, something to be very aware of is that in November we could you know could see some fireworks. I mean, it's our it's going to miss. It may not even miss it. Like what's crazy is as it comes in, as it comes in, eh, it'll be close. It's gonna be close. It's just gonna I don't know. I'm, I'm just surprised that more, I wish they would make a model where we had the TI Atlas coming through and see how it's going to actually interact with this uh, meteor storm because this torrid meteor storm is what has been known throughout history to cause disasters here on Earth, right? So, you know, you have the, Rus the Russia Tuscan event, um, we think that, um, that actually we believe, or most believe, that the Torrids were responsible for um, the Younger Dryas 
uh, activity that caused, uh, you know, the Ice Age. So, <clears throat> very important that people know that this thing, while they are providing, you know, these graphics, like someone put this graphic together, which is nice, it's a 3D model, but we're not, we're not being given all the information of how it's going to interact with these things that really do interact with us, which is specifically this this storm, this big cluster of, of meteorites and asteroids uh, that are driven by a couple of comets. And we don't necessarily even know how it's going to interact when it gets out of here to Jupiter. Is it going to... Because look, it's got a pretty large field to, to pass through um, even at that point. So... I really wish someone out there would put together uh, a fly-through where we had the actual trajectory because here's it literally is coming in on this side so here's Jupiter here's Mars here's all the inner planets so it's coming through like if you follow this pointer and it's going to pass through the elliptic kind of slice through us and just kind of keep going and keep going and supposedly bend a little bit and just fly on down the road but you know how is it going to interact with with this with the very thing that we know uh has caused a ton of damage because see we fly through it we fly through it a lot and there are some storms that are heavier and those are just the clusters that end up coming right so they 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 have this kind of predicted of when um uh, the sun's gravity pulls some of these bigger clusters in, and but so you see here's a big chunk we missed. So now we're gonna fly through, and you know now we're out to 2037. But the point is, is we fly through this thing every year, a couple of times, and what's really important to know is, is that 3i Atlas is going to cross through this torrid meteor stream so I mean I, I don't know any other way to say it but it's going to be a very interesting uh, time in the sky in the fall if you have a if, I would encourage you to get a um, telescope if you got kids you know get out there and uh, you know show them because this is space weather that guy right there the sun controls way more than anything that we do as humans and this is all there is to it i understand you know to me there's a big difference between pollution and um you know uh earth changes when it with regard to uh you know climate and heating and cooling those are all periods throughout our history that actually are affected by you know um the objects that are out in space that cause the sun to do things that affect us like CMEs, plasma, so forth and so on, right? So, and then asteroids that actually hit us and then cause, uh, you know, earth changing uh, environmental um, causation, right? So like an asteroid comes in, strikes the ocean, you know, a plume goes up. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be a planet killer to actually really uh, hurt the planet because most people are so dependent on electricity now that if if something were to happen and uh, electricity goes out for whatever reason, most people are not going to know what to do. So it's unfortunate. We should definitely be training our kids and ourselves a little more to be less dependent on electricity and understand that this, the space weather, you know, is going to affect us far more than if little Jimmy is out there littering, right? And granted, we shouldn't be polluting what God gave us, but we should also be aware that this is going to affect us a lot more, even in the short term and the long term. We've enjoyed a nice uh, dry spell of non-solar weather, and I think that we should, you know, we should be pre be preparing for the fact that that dry spell may end okay and I mean, when i mean dry spell i mean like thousands of years right so um anyways 
yeah, so this is the Torrid Meteor Stream. People need to be aware of what's happening and that 3 I Atlas will pass through it, will pass through it some point here. And it might nick it over here when it's coming into our uh, inner solar system, but it's definitely going to coincide with it here. So at some point, it's going to coincide with it right there. And again, it may, it may even as, well, no, it's going to definitely right here, for sure. It's going to for sure have some sort of effect on the, on this whole field. And if it, if it comes through and slices this, right, and it, like, if it comes through and it makes a big slice because it's, it's so fast, it makes a gap, if you will. And then all of a sudden now we have a new a new pattern within this torch stream that we haven't seen before because they're not gonna really lose uh, you know their gravitational um, uh, orbit but what what could happen is is it it could you know with its energy because it's going so fast, could literally peel right through this and cause a gap, if you will. And it'll be interesting to see what this stream looks like after November, because this is a this is a, it's a large field out here, guys. And if people are not aware of this, I'm you know I'm still cannot express that people need to know about this object, Three Eye Atlas, because it is coming. It is coming. It is going to affect us, and one of the problems is, is right here when it affect right here when it's slicing through the torrids, Earth is right about to enter the torrid stream. Right? See, Earth will be right there, Three Eye Atlas will be right there, and so this is Earth's orbit right here, the or, the blue, and right there is where it'll be right when it slices through. So it's going to be. I'm telling you, it's going to be a really interesting fall in the sky. You need to be very aware of this. Um, I, I'm, so I, I put a video up about it yesterday or a couple days ago, and it, YouTube flagged it as political content, like, like it was like political or something. And I'm sitting here trying to talk back to them. Of course, most of it's probably some AI thing, but. I'm trying to tell them this is not political content at all. It's about a comment. How, how's this politics? So it's funny how YouTube may be classifying the information that's getting out about this 3i Atlas. You need to be aware of it. I'm just telling you. So anyways, guys, that's about it. Just again, heads up. Um, you know, we're starting to see a bit of a tail come off of it. Uh, you know, out, it's, again, it's still out here. Um, well, it's actually right around here somewhere and it just passed through the asteroid belt Everyone needs to be aware of that because if you're not aware of it Well, the problem with that is is that you know you, 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 A lot of times they don't tell us stuff till too late, right? So I don't know why YouTube would flag that content as political because it's not political Like there this is very apolitical as a matter of fact the entire earth could be affected. So um yeah, anyways, just heads up, another heads up. Y'all be good.